lab guy here. Good news, everyone! The darn thing works! Recording at 30 frames progressive. This picture of Philo is being scanned at around 10 hertz vertical. So that's 20 sweeps per second. One down and one up for one cycle. And the horizontal frequency is at its maximum. 1.3 kilohertz. That's 1300 hertz. Here we're looking at the original uh, test slides and the later test slides. The first thing I tried was very simple. I used a piece of a perforated circuit board prototyping material with 100 mil spaced holes. This would make an obvious image plus the 100 mil holes allows me to measure things on the screen. The second slide was the 35 millimeter slide that I chopped up and it's in pretty sad shape now but what a great sacrifice then I printed out some tiny slides on my printer uh, they are not very high resolution at this scale they're just under one inch in diameter and I printed out the Indian head test pattern my own face and Philo T. Farnsworth. And these slides are placed on the face of the photomultiplier and then illuminated with a high intensity LED from above. That LED is attached to a variable power supply so that I can adjust the brightness of it and control what you see on the screen. Let's look at that now. This is the high power LED I use to illuminate the slide which is placed on the target of the tube here. The LED is connected to my variable power supply and I can control the current and voltage and thus the brightness. We install a slide. It's pretty straightforward except getting the dang slide right side up. <laughs> Just drop him in and I got it upside down of course as I said getting the poor guy right side up can be a problem so there's Philo Farnsworth in the right down there in the barrel It's probably as close as I can zoom in and then I can vary the light level completely to control how much video is generated. Here's a picture of lab guy being scanned by the image dissector tube. Let's adjust the light. No? More light? Ooh. Too much? Well, that's good. I do not know why my nose looks dark. Let's take a closer look at the deflection yoke for a moment. This deflection yoke is intended for a CRT with a 1 and 5 eighths inch diameter neck. And so on this 1 inch diameter imaging tube, it's of course all over the place. So I made a little adapter. I took a spool of uh, solder wick and removed the solder wick of course. and trimmed it so that one edge fits inside the deflection yoke and the other edge is just on the outside and it, it works perfectly. I lined it with black tape to block light. Originally I had this yoke on the other way around but you can see that the fiberglass central tube doesn't extend on one side and it extends I don't know, three-eighths of an inch, half an inch on the other. And with the tube this way, the deflection coil is too high up on the 
uh, drift tube. So I turned it over this morning for this morning's testing and uh, got much, much better results. Uh, the picture is uh, a little more um, uh, geometrically proper at the edges now. So uh, that was a nice discovery. And uh, I got real lucky on my little adapter. As soon as I construct a housing for this camera tube and yoke, I will add a, a lens that will allow us to uh, shoot live scenes. When I illuminate my hand held up above it, so, um, and shine the flashlight on it, I could see blurry, wiggly fingers on the scope. I'm not going to fight with this to try to jury rig it for that, but it will eventually become a complete camera, probably not with that particular lens. This one wants to shoot down the barrel and make a small round image. I need a, a wider angle and a much uh, faster lens. This is only f1.8, not good enough. I have a grand total of three FW130 steerable photomultiplier tubes made by ITT. Two of them have the aperture size indicated on them and one of them doesn't. This, this one on the right has an aperture of 40 mils, that's 0 .04 inches. That is a really big aperture, making for a very low resolution tube. The second tube has an aperture size of 0 .014 inches, or 14 mils. That's much better, it's four times, at least three times uh, sharper than this tube. I don't know what the aperture size is for the tube that is currently in the test setup, but it is the clearest of them all. So I'm going to guess 0 0.01 inch, uh, that's 10 mils aperture. All three tubes use S20 photoconductor, uh, which is visible light response. You should be able to recognize the Indian head test pattern. You saw the shadow of the tip of my finger. I printed out some little tiny slides. Let's adjust the light again. I'm turning it down. It seems to be making a really nice signal. Maybe I'm driving the tube too hard. And without an amplifier in the line, I can't control the brightness on the scope. I mean the contrast, the amount of drive. I think at this point even, the phosphor is saturating. We'll turn this way down. There's the, uh, don't worry about the resolution because the slide has no resolution at all. It's, uh, I printed it out, it's a, it's a little tiny clear, clear slide one inch in diameter. It just sits on the face of the, of the camera tube and I, I light it with an LED.
more light. There we go. Straighten him up. Good. We'll turn the light up and we saturate. You see how his forehead saturates first. So these slides are not perfect. Oh, there you go. We'll set that to about there. We'll play with the oscilloscope. To my eye, that does not look saturated on his forehead, so the camera is not adjusting well to it. Oops.